So hello, we're going to uh, pick up from where we started um, yesterday, or at least in the last video. In the last video we did 2.5 and we came up with this spreadsheet. Uh, this spreadsheet doesn't quite go far enough for 2.6, although we've got a start here. This is a good start for 2.6 because we do have FI, we do have the sum of FI, and we also have the sum of the data, or at least the grouped sum of the data. It's not quite you know, the sum. In fact, if we wanted to prove that, uh, this is not a number we're going to use, but if we wanted to prove that, we can just go equal sign average, uh, oh, equal sign average, and then notice that, oh, that's not what we wanted. We wanted the sum. So, actually, the sum of that same cell range, and if we go there we have exactly 8,200 and notice we have 8,247.2 so we overshot it by a little bit. Um, no problem though our mean was actually pretty close. The only thing is the mean doesn't really tell you enough about um, about the data. Um, here we have uh, a bunch of numbers here um, on a spreadsheet and we don't, we don't have any idea of how spread out the data is um, and how concentrated toward the mean um, you know, these, these numbers are. You can, you can actually um, look at some scenarios where, for example, uh, you can have a graph, and I'll just draw, draw you a little picture here. You can have a graph, and here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, and the... Maybe the, maybe the distribution of data is clustered around a mean. Maybe this is your bar X. Maybe this is your mean. Um, and so, and of course, because it's the highest value, it's also your mode. And it also appears to be something like the middle value. So it's either equal to or close to the median. It could be that kind of a, could be that kind of a distribution. Or it could be, hold on a minute. Or it could be a little flatter, like for example, I'll just make a, make a curve in a different color, but it'll be a very similar curve. So maybe it starts off, but then again, it just doesn't go as high. Actually, that's not quite, I want, quite what I wanted. I think the way these curves go, if the data is more spread out, it sort of looks like that. Or if the data is less spread out, I'll do another, I'll do another color. And maybe it's like this. You know, it could it could be very well that that's that that's the case. It could be one of these, one of these distributions. Well, uh, the way that you measure how spread out the data is is using standard deviations. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible, uh, and that's because I'm using my mouse as a pen. Um, but yeah, we the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out. The distribution of the data is, and by the way, um, like uh, the x x axis would be your x values, and the y axis is really your frequency, right? So your frequency is along the uh, y axis, whereas the x axis would would be suggestive of the value of x, and of course the mean is there and everything else is there on that. Uh, particular curve. So that's kind of what we're working towards. We want the standard deviation. But first of all, to, before we get the standard deviation, we need the variance. So let's say that we have um, FI and then we have, uh, let's see, MI, MI, FI. Okay, we got the group mean and it's here. This time we, we go FI, subtract, um, subtract the mean. The mean I'm going to, well, I'll just call the mean the mean, okay? Fi minus the mean. And uh, I'm going to now uh, make this into part of the table, okay? And so I have here Fi, so equal sign Fi subtract the mean. So that, the result of that calculation will tell you the deviation. If the deviation is above, if the 
if the midpoint is above the mean, then that will be a positive number. If the midpoint is below the mean, it'll be not the midpoint, but the, yeah, the FI, sorry, it's not FI that I'm looking for. It is the midpoint. This is not FI, this is MI. <laughs> so the midpoint, the ith midpoint, subtract the mean. So here we're saying that if the midpoint is above the mean, then that deviation will be positive. If it's below the mean, then it'll be negative. So that's N5 subtract uh, the group mean, and I'm going to make that into a fixed interval. And notice it's obviously 19.4 is a number below 82.472, but we can actually get all the rest of these. And notice that three, two of them are significantly below the mean and one of them is almost at the mean and the other two are significantly above the mean. So that's fine. But then we, we want to square this. So the reason we square these deviations is because that's the way statisticians do it to eliminate the equal sign. Then they divide by n and then they take the square root. It sounds convoluted. Why don't they just use absolute, um, absolute uh, value? But that's not what they do. Uh, they do it this way. So here's another column we're adding. So then we just put this in. So now we take these numbers right here and we just square them. That's all we do, right? And they turn out to be big numbers. Now we're not done yet. We want the sum of the squares. That's kind of where, what we're hinting at. So um, then we do the frequency, fi. Actually, why don't we just copy this cell and in front of mi, or in front of this bracket, we, go the fre we type the frequency. And it's the frequency times this square of the deviation. Because these squares of the deviations occur more than once in the distribution because the midpoints are being treated like the only data there is. Um, so that's kind of what we're pretending. It sounds dangerous, but it works surprisingly well. So I'm going to put a box there. And now I'm going to multiply the frequency 12 multiplied by this square of the deviation. So there we go. These numbers just get bigger and bigger. But this time we are taking the sum, right? We're taking the sum of this column. We didn't take the sum of these columns. In fact, I will, um, I'll color that in as gray just to make sure that, you know, we had no intention of taking the sum of these columns. And then, um, And then, um, okay, now we take the sum, equal sign, sum, S-U-M, open bracket, and we're taking the sum of this column. It's going to be a ginormous number. And this is the sum of the squares. Uh, this, this part is often used very much in statistics, but what we really want it for is to compute the variance. And the variance is just the sum of the squares divided by the, um, the sum of the data. Um, now, we're taking a sample. So this is not the entire population. It's customary to take away 1 from the sum. So instead of dividing by 100, you divide by 99. And you do this, equal sign, this number, divided by, in brackets, 100 minus 1. And there's your variance, 1,435.93. But what we want is a standard deviation. So what we want is a standard deviation, and this is the square root of the number above that. So you go SQRT, and then take the number above that, and the standard deviation is 37, uh, 37, almost 38. 
and uh, that's that's how you that's how you get a um, that's how you get the standard deviation for um, for that. Now the the other measures of spread we've already seen. One measure of spread is the range of the data, the difference between the high number and the low number. Another measure of spread is called the, the interquartile range or the IQR. The IQR, now we did the, uh, SI, the, um, the range uh, yesterday. We did the IQR in the last video as well, as well as the semi-interquartile range. These are all arithmetic ways, less, less cumbersome ways of measuring the standard deviation. Turns out though, this is the one that is most loved by statisticians, the standard deviation. So we have a standard deviation of roughly 38, you know, 37.89, okay? And uh, that is uh, used to give us an idea of how spread out the numbers are. So we have here a mean of what? The mean was 82.472. One standard deviation above it uh, to know what value lies one standard deviation above that mean, we add the standard deviation. Turns out that's, you know, that's close to 120. It might actually be 120, okay? And then when you uh, want one standard deviation below, that's 82.472, take away the standard deviation and you get that number. That's roughly in the mid to high 40s, roughly. Okay, so that's that's your you know group mean plus or minus your standard deviation and plus or minus one standard deviation in a normal distribution is roughly 60 percent of your data assuming that it is a what we call a standard normal distribution we'll learn about standard normal distributions when we get to the end of the course or get closer to the end of the course right now we're just learning what standard deviation is and it's a measure of spread well, so is the IQR and the SIQR and the range, okay? These are all measures of spread. And um, the uh, IQR and the semi-interquartile range were discussed in the last video. All right, so this is how you do standard deviation and, um, um, you know, and how you do the table. Um, now, let's check our answers. The way you check your answers, there's a quick and dirty way to do it. Uh, you, uh, well, here. The variance, I can go equal sign, you know what? The variance is not as important as the standard deviation. The standard deviation, I believe there's a formula called STDEV, and you just enter the cell range of your data, and there it is. So 37.89, roughly 38 compared with roughly 39 and a half. Fairly close, they're not too bad, you know, considering that we only had, that we're really only working with five midpoints and this was working with the entire data. So you always expect this to be the more accurate. This is the quick and dirty standard deviation that you do when you um, basically, at, at the worst case scenario, are doing this by hand. The variance, well, that's easy. There is no formula for variance. Oh, maybe there is. Okay. Well, I didn't think there would. I was going to do something else. I was going to square this number and show you. But since there's already a formula for variance uh, in the in in um, Google Sheets, I thought we'd do that. But then we can also do this number squared. I think you get the same number, right? So these two numbers are the same. So the square of the standard deviation is the variance. Um, all right, the square of the standard deviation is the variance. These, by the way, um, these um, these formulas are given in your textbook. And in fact, uh, you may have noticed that there's a whole summary of formulas on the back pages in the back of your book. The last two pages in the textbook have to do with just every formula that's important in the course. Since you're doing this at home, uh, you want to be able to have a quick reference to those formulas and uh, please do so. So now, section 2.6, uh, I'm going to now go over what the homework is going to be for you guys. And then I have a 
problem, which I still have, I'm still cooking up at this point. You'll have the you'll have the uh, assignment later this evening, and along with the due date. I figure the due date will be sometime next week. Okay, um, I'm in the wrong place. Let's go to two point six. So 2.6 measures of spread. We're going to be doing one through, so section 2.6 MDM for you. Uh, we are doing one through one through nine. Uh, number 12 and number 14. Um, so that'll be that. So these are on pages 148 to 149. Okay, so those are my exercises. There they are. I can see them clearly on my camera. So anyway, um, once again, pages 148 to 149, 1 through 9, 12, and 14. Okay. And in the meantime, we will do some, uh, I will be doing some major uploading or, or some, I'll be giving you a project to do, a, a small project. It's not going to be very big, but it'll involve something like this, something, something like what you see here. Um, okay, so I'm going to... Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to actually bail out of this video.